Battle of the It Bags. The first contender is the updated Louis Vuitton Go One Four bag. Going head to head against the Chanel 19, the Louis Vuitton Capucine bag, and the Chanel Boy bag. Which one is the best? I'm going to be revealing my favorite at the end of the video, including everything that you need to know about each of these bags, including what fits inside, outfit styling, price and size options, pros and cons, and my final verdict, which was actually a lot easier to come to a conclusion on than I thought. Hey everyone. Steph here. Now I recently unboxed the updated Go On 4 bag here on my YouTube channel and since then I have been inundated with messages asking for a comparison of this and the Chanel 19 bag, also the Capucine bag because these bags are pitched at a very similar price point to each other. So let's let the battle commence. We're going to start with the Go On 4 bag so here is some history about this piece. So the name of this bag, Go On 4, stands for Jesquier October 2014. So French Belgium designed Nicolas Jesquier, who is the current women's creative director at Louis Vuitton. He was first appointed in 2013 and he designed this bag. It first hit the runway in October 2014, but it's not until 2023 we have seen the revamp of this style. So the Go One Four bag is very similar to the brand's Twist Lock bag. It features the same logo on the front, but the main difference is the malletage detail. Now, some of you may know Louis Vuitton started making making trunks in 1854 and the malletage detail is part of the spirit and essence of where Louis Vuitton started out. Now that we've gone through a little bit of history on the Go On 4 bag, it is safe to say that Louis Vuitton are pitching this against its other pinnacle or most iconic bag of the brand if you will and that is the Louis Vuitton Capucine. The Capucine bag is named after Rue de Capucine which is the Parisian street where Louis Vuitton opened his first ever store in 1854 and the Capucine was first released in 2013, so a year before we first ever saw the Go One Four bag. The Capucine bag comes in four different sizes currently and I said that I have three in my collection so the mini black one you've just seen I also have the mini in the scarlet red and then I have the next size up which is the BB in this beautiful stardust colorway and something that you might not have known about the Capucine bag. This Fleur charm here is inspired by the lucky charm of Louis Vuitton's very own mother. Now the Capucine bag is crafted with over 250 handcrafted operations and thousands of steps. Each Capucine goes on a one week journey from skin to bag under the watchful eye of a leather artisan. Now you might have already noticed the Go On 4 bag from Louis Vuitton, I'll show you them all side by side in a second, looks kind of similar to the Chanel 19 bag. Now the Chanel 19 bag first appeared in 2019, designed by the late Karl Lagerfeld. The design of this bag pays homage to the signature 2.55 bag, which was originally created in February 1955 by Coco Chanel herself. Karl wanted to reimagine this in the 21st century. Now what I do find interesting is that I had a few comments on the full review of this bag that I did, saying that Louis Vuitton are copying Chanel. And if you actually know the dates of these bags, the Go On 4 first came out in 2014 and the 19 in 2019. So I think it might actually be a case of Chanel taking inspiration from the Go On 4. So which is the most expensive bag out of these four Icon It bags? What I'm going to do is compare the Go On 4 in the medium size, which is the MM size, the one that I have here. And then comparative to that, we have the Chanel 19 in the small size, the Chanel Boy bag in the medium size. To be specific, this is the old medium medium size. I actually think for this to be a fair comparison, the mini Capucine bag is probably too small compared to all the other bags. So I'm going to be comparing the Capucine BB, which fits a similar amount in it to the MM Go One Four. The most expensive is actually different in the UK to the US. If you are a UK buyer, the most expensive is the Capucine BB bag, which retails at £5,650. However, if you are in the US, the Go One Four and the Capucine Capucine BB are neck and neck. They are both the same price, whereas the Go On 4 is slightly cheaper in the UK currently. And in the US, both of these retail for the standard leather options at $6,750. Now let me show you some of these bags closer. So two of the most similar styles we have here. These are both flat bags, Louis Vuitton and Chanel, very similar prices. Here we go. This is them on the front. So you have the twist lock logo on the front of the Louis Vuitton bag. You have the malletage detail. So rather than just quilt 
everything as we've been through, whereas this is kind of just stitched into the leather. So the detail of the malotage takes a lot longer to do and it is a more luxurious finish, I guess on the Louis Vuitton. On the strap with the Chanel, you cannot remove it and it has mixed metal hardware. So it has gold, silver, depending on the color you get, this can vary. On this bag, you do get a detachable top handle here, which I've attached to my chain to make it slightly longer. You then get this beautiful, intricate chain strap, which can be removed and it can be put on the bag in many different ways. So you can wear it crossbody on the shoulder. You cannot wear the 19 as a shoulder bag. You can only wear it with this top handle and this as a crossbody or shoulder. The sides of the bag here, now the 19 does kind of stand up on its own, but we don't have feet. This bag, because of its shape, will stand up by itself. Again, we don't have feet, but this one is less likely to fall over. On the back of the bag, there is no pocket on the Go One Four, but there is a pocket on the 19, which does also have a magnetic closure. And the other main difference to note is that the Chanel 19 is not leather lined. In fact, it has a fabric lining, but the Go One Four is fully lined with calf leather and it even has a little mirror pocket, which is very cute. The Chanel Boy and the Go One Four. This is a much more kind of boxy shape from the side there. And neither of them have feet. And the Chanel bag is actually quite notorious for, you can see the bag number one isn't as big as it looks because the actual inner sits inside of this more prominent edging. And when you put the bag down, you do have to be careful because these edges are very likely to wear. And then the Capucine bag, so the other it bag from Louis Vuitton. Um, this is, it kind of is a flat bag, but it's not a flat bag as such. It's more of a structured bag. And you can see the front here. We have a top handle, which is non-detachable on the Capucine, but it is detachable on the Go One Four the sides of the bag. You can see the Capucine bag is quite a lot taller here. The bottom of the bags, you do have feet on the Capucine and then you do have a flap closure. Again, this is not removable. It can get a bit faffy actually at times and you have two compartments, again, leather lined on the inside of the Capucine bag. Now for the pros and cons before I reveal my final verdict. I have done mostly full reviews on these bags, by the way, on my YouTube channel if you want to find out anything else. The Go One Four, the pros that I have found with this bag. The number of ways that you can wear this chain is incredible. Again, in the full review, I show you how, but with the top handle, double the straps up, you can shoulder it, you can lengthen the strap here, you can cross body it. So this is actually quite a versatile piece. The twist lock on the front, is so smooth and beautiful and just listen to this like just the way that it closes it feels like a really high quality piece it has the ombre effect which actually comes out deeper on camera from what i can see in my viewfinder these look really dark but in real life it isn't that dark and you can get this bag in quite a few really fun colors right now so if you're looking for something that kind of looks quite elegant it is a nod to louis vuitton's history but you are wanting a modern updated fun piece this is a great choice i love that this bag is lined fully with leather inside and the mirror pocket here with a little mirror in is just an extra little touch. Pros of the Capucine bag. The main one for me is that it has such a fantastic top handle because I love a top handle bag. However, I will say it depends on the size that you get. So the mini, for example, there is a lot less clearance in the handle. So I can put this on my arm, but as you can see, there is a lot more room on the BB size. So that is worth bearing in mind, but it is a great bag that stands up by itself. It has feet on the bottom. So when you put this down, the bag always looks great and you can just grab and go. The leather Capucine bags are mostly made from Terillion leather. You can see the grain of the leather, which is a French top grain leather from a young bull, which is drummed. So this is a really luxurious leather that is perfect for every day. Again, I love that this bag is fully leather -like and the amount of color options, leather options, the sizes, the arty capucines, for example, like the exclusive collaborations that Louis Vuitton do when it comes to this bag, I think is the shining point of this. Pros of the Chanel 19 bag. This is made from lambskin, same as the Go One Four on the outer. And I will say this is probably one of the easiest bags to use. Like if you are into your casual everyday bags, this one is just super, super easy. The turn lock, is just absolutely effortless. You've got the flap, 
you kind of have the slouching and also the pocket on the back is definitely one of the advantages of the Chanel 19. And the fact that this has mixed metal hardware means it's easy to style with different jewelry. And the pros of the Chanel boy bag. I think these are just super cool looking bags. Like I think they are really edgy. The cons of these four bags that are worth knowing about and all of them suffer from this to a degree and that is the sheer weight of them. None of these I would describe as lightweight bags. The lightest would actually be the Chanel boy bag just like when I'm picking it up and holding it this is the lightest out of all three of them. The Go One Four definitely has quite a bit of weight to it especially when you are wearing it with this gold chain. Some other cons with this bag that I found so far no feet on the bottom of the bag this is lambskin so you do have to be careful this is a bag that I store hanging up and when I take it out I try and hook it on something as opposed to putting it down too much. There is also no leather on the chain however you can take the top handle you can attach it to the chain like so and then use this as a crossbody bag so that you have the leather on your shoulder rather than the actual chain on your shoulder which can become a bit uncomfortable after a few hours of wearing the bag. And the other main con about this bag is that it looks bigger than what it seems because we do have a lot of puffiness with the malotage detail here that actually when I've used the bag inside you can get all your everyday essentials in here but it is a bit smaller than what this bag first appears. Cons of the Capucine bag then. One of the cons to me is, um, like I've mentioned before, the flap here can be really faffy. It can kind of get in the way. And sometimes on the bigger sizes, maybe it's not so bad, but on the mini, it can get really frustrating. And obviously you can't take the top handle off either, which again, just makes it slightly harder to access the inside of the bag. The weight of the bag, as I've just mentioned, it being fully leather lined. This is not a lightweight piece, I don't find, especially not when you get to your bigger size. That is why I will not own anything over the BB size anymore because this already has quite a bit of weight to it and there is nothing inside. The central divider in the middle of the bag here, which cannot be removed, can sometimes, again, be a little bit frustrating, especially on the mini side. And top tip if you are buying a Capucine bag, this is something to look out for. Can you see the difference in the shape of the top handles? So on my Python, I will say this is a really rigid handle. There is something inside of this handle, I don't know if it is plastic, but it is something a lot firmer than just this one. Can you see? And in some of the older Capucine bags, especially the large ones, these handles go really flat. And I don't think that is very flattering to this bag. So the tension of the leather pushes on these. One thing you can do is get a piece of ribbon, like the Louis Vuitton ribbon, tie it around here and create a bit of tension. Can you see that? So that you are actually changing the shape of the handle when it is in storage to stop it from going too flat. Cons of the Chanel 19 bag, the biggest con for me on this bag is the strap situation. So this strap looks very cool, but it is very heavy. There is absolutely no way to detach it. You literally, so if you're just using the top handle here, you have to carry it around with this strap as well, which just adds so much weight to this bag. I also find that it's actually quite a casual looking bag, so it's great for every day, but I don't feel like it transfers into the evening easily. Um, the fact that it doesn't double up and you can't use it as a shoulder bag, um, for me, the Go On 4 bag, the fact it has the nicer gold chain with it, that goes from day to night, I think, much easier than the 19 does. And cons for the boy bag. There are quite a few cons with this bag. Um, I do know a lot of people who have this bag. They find the chain quite frustrating because it can catch your hair a lot. I personally haven't had this issue with this bag. Um, I don't know why. I generally use it as a shoulder bag. I think maybe it's more if you're using it as a crossbody. Also, no feet on the bottom of the bag. So I've mentioned these parts here can wear quite easily. And it's also just very faffy to use, like just holding this huge flap open. It's a very rigid bag and it is a lot smaller than it first looks because the actual inside of the bag is quite a bit smaller than the actual parameters of the bag on first appearance. Now let me show you what roughly fits inside each of them. So here all the bags are lined up. Now in terms of smaller items such as a card holder and a zippy coin purse, this is mine from Louis Vuitton, they will all fit inside of the bags but obviously we'll have differing room. So to demonstrate inside the Chanel 19 here, my zippy coin purse, you can see that there is still plenty of room. Can we get a full-size purse in here? I'm just gonna take this one out. 
put that in there and yes, you can get a full size purse in there and you could still get a set of keys, a mobile phone, some smaller toiletries, usually go in there. Now I'm going to take these out and we are going to test some bigger items. Here we have an iPad Pro and a book. This is a thin book though, but just for reference in terms of being like an A5 size. That easily fits in there. And for the iPad, you can actually get the iPad in there, but then the bag won't close because it does sit a little bit too high. Now let's compare this to the Go On 4 from Louis Vuitton. And this is the inside. I'd say we've definitely got a lot less give than the Chanel 19. We can get things in like the Zippy coin purse and the card holder, for example, but you can see it takes up a lot more space. Can we get a full size purse in here? Ooh, we can just get a full size purse in here. Let's try the book. Okay, you can get the book in, but it does sit slightly out the top. However, you can still close the bag. It is a thin book though. The iPad definitely won't fit based on that. So as you can see, it won't go in. The capacity is definitely a lot smaller on the Go 1.4. Now for the Capucine BB bag. This one is probably going to have the most capacity. We do have two compartments inside of the bag here. Zippy coin purse and card holder. We can easily fit those in there. A full size Capucine purse. Okay, let's try this. Okay, you can get it in if you slot it in that way. So you can see that it is there. We now have like three purses in here, which I would never actually put this amount in. I'm just gonna put the zippy card holder in there, keys, phone, a few little makeup bits, and all of that will very easily, I've not organized this very well, will easily fit in the back. Now let's try for bigger items in the front. Can we get the book in? Ooh, we can just get the book in, although if that was thicker, I'm not sure how easily that would go in. Can we get the iPad in? Okay, we can put it in that way not the other way. Now let's quickly try the boy bag. Again, this one looks deceivingly larger than what it is. I keep this one stored. We do have a liner in here. I do the 19 as well. So it does make it slightly smaller, but this is the inside layout of the bag. We can easily fit things like a zippy coin purse, a phone, for example, keys, and a few makeup bits. So all of that fits nicely. You can get your everyday essentials in here. Can we get a full size purse in? Okay, if we push the edges out, actually you can get that in. It does sit slightly proud, but the bag will still close with that purse in there. For the book now, okay, it will go in, but it sits out again, so you wouldn't be able to close the bag. And there's absolutely no way that this iPad will be going into the boy bag. So in terms of capacity, the Chanel 19 in the small size actually has the biggest amount of capacity because it does expand out quite a lot. It has a lot of give in the shape of the bag. Then the Capucine BB, however, it because it's quite a structured bag, it's restricted this way, but you can actually get taller items in than you can on the Chanel 19 bag. So if capacity, you want a bigger capacity, go for one of these two. Um, if you don't mind a slightly smaller bag, the Chanel Boy and the Ego 14 would work perfectly fine too. Now we're going to try the bags on to get an idea of what they look like in action. Okay, so first let's start with the Go On 4 and the Chanel 19 bag. Now you can wear this with the top handle. I'm wearing a rather thick coat here, so that works fine. And then with this one, you can use the top handle, which would easily fit on here, which you can also double the chains up and wear it as a shoulder bag for comparison. Uh, this one you cannot wear as a shoulder bag because you cannot adjust this. So the only way, well you can wear it as a shoulder bag, sorry, just it is, it sits here as opposed to higher up on the shoulder. I feel like this is more of an evening look, whereas this is more of a casual look. And then with the Chanel 19, you can crossbody it like so. And you can crossbody this. Now you can adjust the strap three different ways. You can either attach these parts here to this and it will lengthen the chain if you want this longer. You can also add on the leather top handle strap, which again will make the strap even longer. So this is on the least longest length that you can actually have. So to show you this one crossbody, it sits slightly higher, but again, I would just add the chains on here and lengthen it and then it would sit probably about here. 
So similar then to the Chanel 19 bag, but overall the Go On 4 bag is actually more versatile in the different ways that you can wear it compared to the Chanel 19. Now let's throw the Chanel boy bag into the equation. I'm wearing the Chanel 19, the Go On 4 as the longer length shoulder bags. So the boy we can shoulder by doubling up the straps and you can see that it actually sits lower than the Go One Nine. There is more clearance under the strap. We can then lengthen this just to show you. So this is the 19 and the boy bag. And then you can adjust this, but there's only a few different settings to actually adjust. But this one again is a good length to crossbody. So this is all of the three flat bags worn together in all the different ways that you can wear them. So you can get an idea of what they look like with an outfit. And now let's take a look at the Capucine BB and the Go On 4 bag. So of course you can top handle both of these and you can, I've just attached the top handle just to show you and demonstrate. You actually get more clearance, if that makes sense, in the Go On 4. But then obviously we know all the different ways you can wear the Go On 4 as a shoulder bag, etc. And then with the Capucine, you get a detachable strap. Now these differ depending on which version of the Capucine you get. You can adjust them. So that is great if you want to lengthen this. This is one of my favorite chains on the Capucine bag. Now you cannot really double this up and use it as a shoulder strap. So you can only really wear this as a longer shoulder bag. Just to demonstrate the two, this is where they hit. I'm five foot six for reference. So you can see there, I think both of them sit at a perfect length. And of course we can cross body also, but I would change the strap, which I haven't done here on this one. So it's just sit a bit lower and then it will sit at a similar height to the Capucine bag. This one easier to get into from this kind of height, just opening the flap. This one, Again, not too hard to get into, but it does take a little bit, just take two hands to get into here, and then you can get everything that you need from the bag. Which out of these iconic IT bags do I think is the best bag? There's many different ways that I can look at this, which would maybe render different answers. So the way that I have tried to answer this is, if I could only keep one of these bags, which one would I keep? But that maybe didn't bring me actually to the best answer. So the bag that I would pick if I could only keep one would most likely actually be my Chanel Pearl Boy bag because I am obsessed with this bag. It feels so special. I never thought that I would own a Pearl bag from Chanel with how much they cost. And this one for me, feels so special. However, I don't want to say go and buy the Chanel boy bag if you are debating these four because I don't think it is the best bag. In fact, I think it's from a functionality point of view, the worst one you could buy. It's just that this one is a super special edition and it means something to me. So considering that, I actually said it's quite easy to come to a conclusion if I had to decide between my 19 Go One Four and the Capucine bag because the boy bag is a bit of an anomaly, it was actually a really easy decision for me because there's absolutely no way that I would give up my Louis Vuitton Capucine bags. I absolutely adore them. Um, I personally just love, uh, like I said, a top handle bag and I think the structure of the Capucine bag is amazing. This is one of the most beautiful bags on the market right now. If I was picking a bag for every day though, I wouldn't pick this one. I actually think the Chanel 19 is probably one of the easiest bags to use, but then I think the Go One 4 is the most versatile, like to use in the day and to take into the evening. So I can see why all of these bags are iconic it bags, if you will. All of them have their own features, their own looks, their own style that is absolutely exceptional. So I hope that you find the perfect one for you. And I hope that this video helps in some way if you are debating between certain styles. Do let me know your favorite in the comments. Coming up next, the seven luxury items that I would not buy again and why this video is going to help save you a lot of money. Enjoy.